Greetings, this is the Timeshare Traveler, and today is episode 110. Nine months into a one year in timeshares. Um, I wanted to do a video about why I did all this stuff, and, and you know, for anybody who's even considering something like I've done, um, I just wanted to talk about that and, you know, sort of give you my perspective, and maybe that'll help you get along and then have your adventure. So, as an overview, uh, why did I do this year of travel, you might ask, and what comments have I gotten? I've gotten kind of interesting comments because I run into different people and I chat and they find out what I'm doing. Um, where have I gone? I'll go through that. What have I learned? Um, and what has worked very well? And what would I do differently? And how anyone can do this? And I, I really, the, the point of this video is, A, to give you a little update on, on what's going on and about my travels and so forth. but. More importantly, is um, I, I think it's a great opportunity if if you can somehow manage to do that uh, kind of travel like this um, that you should really try to do it. Um, don't let it, don't put it off if you if unless you absolutely need to. But anyway, I'll go into great detail about that. First, let me tell you a little bit about my channel, and I'll be right back. Hi, this is Cliff, and I'm the Timeshare Traveler. Welcome to my channel. The purpose of my channel is to educate those who love traveling in timeshares. I've been an owner, owner for 15 plus years at uh, Timeshare Ownership. I have elite ownership with Marriott, Hilton, and Worldmark. I have a, published over 100 Timeshare video reviews, and I've published over 95 Timeshare tips. I can be found on Facebook at Timeshare Trav, at Twitter, Timeshare Trav, and on the web at www.timesharetraveler.com. Oh, well, I'm back. And uh, to answer the question, why did I do this year of travel? Um, I laugh only because I sometimes wonder, but it's been a wonderful experience and continues to be a wonderful experience. And really the first two are different versions of the same thing, which is I wanted to discover the, the, what the next phase of, of my life would be, and I wanted a break. I, I'd worked for almost 40 years in corporate America. Um, that had come to an end. Um, I had started doing some real estate investing. Um, I raised three kids. I worked multiple jobs while I was doing that. I was an IT professional. I taught school at night sometimes. I wrote articles for magazines. I did um, on um, telephone, uh, all kinds of stuff. I was busy from six in the morning till midnight, go and going, going with something, activity. And I wanted a break. But I also wanted to take a break because I wanted to think, well, okay, it's um what what's next? What do I want to do next? You know, there's all this you know, follow your career stuff. But then at some point you kind of it's up to you to live the rest of your life. Um, and then the the next one is I I love the adventure that travel provides. And again, these are uh, this isn't so much about me. It's it it is about me. But I want you to think about uh, why you might want to do something like this because it has been a, a an amazing experience for me. And I. I really I recommend it for everyone. So I just wanted to give you my pers I'm giving talking about me, but really I'm talking about me because I would like you to think about why you should do it. Um, and I love the new experiences and seeing things from a different perspective, different parts of the country and different have different geographies. It gets you to think differently, particularly when you're wanting to figure out what the next step is. Take a break and do it. Don't try to do it while you're you know, don't try to change the oil while you're driving a car. Um, take a break, actually do that kind of stuff. So that's what, that's what I, I found that, you know, I tried changing the oil while I was driving the car, not, not much fun. Um, and I wanted, to do, I wanted to do something that was active and travel is an active experience and it really, um, I, you know, continued to do all my exercise and so forth. And, and I discovered that I have a career in video blogging, which you're now listening to. And it wasn't something that I would have ever thought that would, would ever show up, but I've been enjoying doing that. And I've met people who have actually followed my, my blog, and that's been all, a lot of fun to talk to those people. And I, and then, and I did find, discover my next, my next uh, phase, and I actually completed my real estate license while I was traveling in, in timeshares. I did the course online, and then I had to uh, land at the place to take my real estate license, and I did pass, so good news for that. Oh... I have gotten some great comments, and, and I've, I've listed a, a few of the ones that come to mind. My, the one that shocked me over and over was I was in an Uber for going from one place to the next, and the Uber driver goes, you know, I, get, I have at least, you know, so this was in Hawaii, I said, at least once a week, maybe twice a week, 
I, I get the comment of someone writing saying, oh, you hear you're living in Hawaii. Why haven't, you know, I, I, need, to, I need to like, you know, sometime take a break and just travel the world and do, you know, explore. This is such a beautiful place and spending time on vacation like this has been so wonderful. Um, and he said, you know what? In four years I've been doing that. I, have, I hear that once or twice a week. He said, by the way, you're the first person in my Uber that's actually doing it. So for some reason I'm doing something that's hard yet, and it is hard, but it's something everybody desires. And I kind of want to, you know, my example, I want you guys to do this. Um, so if there's anything I can do to help, and hopefully I've provided information on some of the technical aspects of doing it with timeshares, you could do it in many different ways. So hopefully um, I've inspired some of you to, to um, do something similar. And that other one was, how did you manage to do that? And again, I'll actually describe a little bit at the end um, what I actually did. But it's really just taking, a, looking at this problem um, and breaking it down into smaller and smaller chunks till they're manageable. And then you just go through them one by one. And that's really fundamentally what I did. And then the other one, a lot of people say, oh, I'm just used to my routine. And that one is, <laughs> I'm guilty of that 40 years, you know, doing the same, you know, some version of the same routine. So you just have to break it. I, I, I think that you just have to, like, something's got to be big enough for you to break your routine. Um, I couldn't leave my pet. That's the hardest one for me because I love animals. I'm, I'm the horrible person that when you're walking your dog and somebody stops and they start petting your dog for, like, five minutes, that's me. That's me because I, I, I really love animals, but I, I know I had to give that up, any op opportunity for that, because I wanted to do this adventure, and that's just that's a hard trade-off. Um, the one that was interesting is I couldn't live without my stuff. I would have said that was true about me, but the reality is I don't miss any of my stuff. Uh, you know, and um, it was a little bit of a process of, you know, giving it away or putting it in storage and various things like that. But I really, it's surprising once you get rid of the stuff and don't have it. Yeah, you don't really, it's, you're really not going to miss it. Um, but, you know, uh, that's, that, that, that's just true for me. And maybe that's not true. Um, do you get lonely? I would say yes, but I'm not sure any more lonely than if when I was in my routine. Cause just because you're busy running through your routine, you may be lo completely lonely and you're just in your routine. Um, and it makes you sort of keeps you from being lonely. It's not so bad to actually sit with being lonely and actually figure out what you want to do with that and make the choices you want to make. Um, so actually, I, I viewed that actually as a catalyst um, for what I was doing. And I would be too scared to do that. Well, I admit to that one, too. I was kind of scared and didn't know if I could actually pull it off. But I, again, I go back to my, I just broke the problem down into smaller pieces and just went after it. So hope that helps. Uh, if any of those make sense to you that uh, might be holding you back. And again, I, this is all about hoping that you guys will join me someday on a, on a, a one year or, or three month adventure, whatever it is, whatever you're comfortable doing. Just a real quick, where have I been? March to June, Kauai and the Big Island, June to August, driving trip to Ohio and Indiana from my family and high school reunion, September to November, back to Hawaii, Maui, and the Big Island. I like the Big Island, by the way. Um, you've noticed that. November, I went to Phoenix, and in December, I'm currently in um, Myrtle Beach, and, and then I'll be in Monterey, California with my kids at Christmas, right on the ocean. It's a beautiful, amazing place. Um, and in early January, I go to Phoenix and Los Angeles, mid-January to mid-February. Oh, I back to Hawaii, but this time it's Oahu, Molokai, and Kauai. And then end of February, early March, I'm up in, up in Oregon uh, enjoying myself, and that's kind of the end of my, my year of travel. So there you have it. So the next one is what have I learned? And, and really, this is just if these ring true to you and matter to you, then, uh, you know, maybe you should consider doing something like that. Again, it doesn't have to be a year. That's, okay, maybe I'm a bit obsessive. So, okay, a year is a, a bit obsessive. But three months um, is more than enough just to break that. And I, and I find travel to be meditative because it puts me in a different place. And so it lets me think, think differently. I don't have that routine that's kind of like, you know, keeping me busy. I mean, I may not be doing anything that's really valuable. I'm just doing my life. And so I consider it meditative in the sense that it sort of breaks that cycle. Um, and you get to choose your path, and it's kind of fun planning it out. I, you know, because you know, timeshares require you to sort of plan ahead. Um, it's great for restructuring your life. I, 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 
I wish I had known before when I was younger what I now know about how this really taking this break uh, can restructure your life. I was always too afraid to do it, to be honest. I'm, I, I'm one of those living in fear. I got to keep, you know, got to keep earning money. Got to keep, 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 you know, you add, add the list to, to, to yourself. Um, you know, it's been an adventure. Uh, and, and I, you know, one of my cousins calls, I've been called Frodo, um, by one of my friends. And so I, I guess I'm kind of like on a, on a trek. Um, there are problems with all choices. Um, enjoy the journey. So I chose this. There are problems. If I didn't choose this, I'd still have problems. So you're not going to, this is not an escape from problems. It's just a different set. And that's kind of shakes things up. And just enjoy that. Um, and that's what I've learned. Um, so again, if I'm hoping this helps you guys decide that you'd like to do something like this because it's really, really beneficial on the other side. I don't know how to, I don't know how to, to get, describe that it's beneficial. I'm happier because I've been able to, not because I'm escaping or maybe there's a part of that there was initially, but more because I've really discovered what I want to do. And, and I've learned that, um, I have more to offer and I'm starting a new career in real estate and I'm excited about that. I mean, I'm, I'm, I, I, I might be almost as excited of, as when I first got out of school and got my first paycheck and was like, oh, wow, ooh, working can be good. There's a good part to it. Um, and I, know, I learned what, make me happy, what makes me happy, which is I, I love to learn. I mean, and it took me a while to like unpack that, uh, to find out what really makes you happy. And, and that, gosh, why did I have to wait till I was 68 years to rediscover what I knew when I was 12? Um, but eh, that's what happens. Um, that little little funny things is, I love the sound of waves on lava rock more than on a beach. I like that trickle sound as a wave hits that. So it just it gives it was more meditative, and I just enjoyed the, the those sounds versus the crashing of the waves along the on along the ocean. And I really enjoy sunsets. There's probably been way too many photos and the blogs I've done of sunsets, but that I, I you, you can never have a sunset or even a sunrise. I'm, I'm, I'm currently getting sunrises because I'm on the East Coast. So I got the sun come up over the ocean. So that's what I've learned. Well, here's what's worked really well. And I guess you could call this my new routine if you want to call it that way. But I have, you know, it's having consistent luggage. I know that sounds silly, but you know, that way I kind of know where everything is. I have my large suitcase, a carry-on suitcase, my small cooler, because that way when I'm going from unit to unit, I can pack up the food that needs to be, you know, chilled, get it to the next place, and then I have my backpack for with my computer and various things like that. And in, in some ways, I kind of feel like I'm carrying a lot of baggage, because it's, but it's in my whole life. Um, so even when I go on a short trip, I end up taking the, the same suitcases, because it's all packed. It's like my little, it's like my little house on the road kind of thing, in, in my, and that's, that's all I need. Um, I probably could cut it back a little bit, but eh, it's, it's okay. It's worked. Um, the other thing is I, I've, I've been able to continue all my exercise still. Walk, I'm walking about 12,000 steps a day this year, uh, and I've been able to pretty much keep that up. And I, I have a membership with uh, Planet Fitness, and they seem to be pretty much where all the resorts are. So there's uh, every island in Hawaii, except I don't think Molokai will have it, but I'll, I'll work that, that out for that week there. Um, there seems to be one, and I'm able to get to it. Um, I'm meeting friends on the trip. I've, I've kind of created a, a method of doing that planning. That's the hardest part is trying to figure out, coordinate that because not many people because, hey, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm traveling all over the place and not many people can ma match the break that I've been able to take. But it's been that. Meeting family on the trip, that's worked out really well um, as well. My kids have joined me on a few things. Um, <clears throat> um, and I've talked to a lot of people, maybe it starts with Uber drivers, but uh, other people. Um, about what they like about the area. Um, so I like chatting with people that are locally. I kind of try to, I try not to, I try to live in the community as much as I can, even though I'm kind of temporary. Coffee shops and are great for that in my experience. Um, and people love to chat once they find out you're on kind of an adventure, you become an interesting, an interesting person they like, because I think everybody wishes they could do this. Um, and, and then it's just a matter of doing it. Um, I did all my hobby, hobbies, nothing stopped, exercise, coffee tasting, and dance are mine, uh, but I'm able to do all of those things. Um, 
having an open mind. I think if you don't, if, if you're really set in your ways, this may not be the best thing for you, but if you really want to open up, this is a great thing. And I've enjoyed cooking. I mean, I, the good news is I don't have to clean as much because I'm moving from week to week. So cleaning up the kitchen, that, that, that part is kind of gone, le much less. So it's been made cooking maybe a little more fun, but it's also allowed me to experiment with my cooking a little bit, which is kind of, I, I like that. And the last thing is when I don't have a car, I'm actually okay. I can get by on Uber travels. So that's been really good. Okay, what would I do differently? Um, I'd involve my family more in my travels. It's more complicated and then their schedules w work. But I think if I were to do it over again, it was I, I, I put so much energy into getting me ready to go. I, I think I would have been better if I'd um, reached out, figured out ways to reach out to family. Because I had a great time when I, when I drove, uh, you know, to, to my family reunion and when I stopped and to my high school reunion and met people that I hadn't seen in many years that that was really that was really uh, that's a highlight um, and I you know those kind of things I would do more of but again I'll have it, have a chance to do this again um, and and I think I'm developing sort of right now I've got a group of people that are starting to think about traveling with me and so that that works out I've sort of on the back end figured this out um, I think I'd like to do more driving trips. I've been doing a lot of Hawaii, and that's probably more because it's more meditative. It's a culture is a little slower, and it fits really well when you're trying to re redo that. I think going forward, I'm actually going to be more of an um, more of an adventurer to go to do and see things, and less about an internal. What do I want to do next? Um, so that might be helpful for you. Um, I didn't do any international travel. That's more to do with you know. With COVID and everything, I, I didn't. I didn't want to. I I know what the U.S. healthcare system is. I didn't want to have that burden of oh, oh I'm a different country. How do I get you know Paxlovid or whatever if I happen to get COVID or something like that? How do I do that? So I didn't do any really. I did no international travel. I should say that. And and the last thing is, don't worry about what I forgot when I left. You can actually they have you know what they have stores everywhere. You pretty much can buy what you need particularly if you're living simply like I've been doing. So there you have it. That's what I'd do differently. And lastly, there are no real secrets here, but here's what I would tell you um, about anyone can do this. Um, it does require equipment. It's just a project. Think of it as a project and you're going to run this project. Um, you don't have to travel for a year. Do it for three months. Do it for, you know, do it for one month. Um, anything to get that, you know, if you, if you like the ideas of what you could potentially get out of what I've gotten out of it, then I think you can get that even in shorter trips. Um, there are so many excuses in life on why you don't do something. Don't let that be what makes your life is don't, don't live with the excuses, live with the opportunities. Um, and I know that sounds trite, but, um, it's simple. And it's probably, I think it's true, but so anyway, maybe that's a lesson learned more than a, how anyone can do this, but, um, find your advocates, find people that can support you in this, you know, somebody pick up, the, if it's only a month, somebody pick up the mail. I had to, I rented out my place because I was doing it for a year, but you know, if you're doing it for a month, just who's going to take care of your mail, who's your advocates, who's right there to help you to, to, to help you achieve that. Those are, those are, those are your real friends. Um, don't do it all at once. I practiced multiple times. First, I did I did like a two-week trip just to see that, whoa, ooh, now I know what goes in my bags when I'm going to go for two weeks. Um, and I was all doing it, putting everything in my car. Um, and again, it was all about getting comfortable with it. I did a two-month trip. I think I even did a six-month trip, um, which may have been the first year I was going to do it, but I just took a break after six months. Um, it doesn't need to be daunting. Just break it down. Break it into small pieces till you're comfortable with it. And that's what I say by practice. It's really just getting better at it. Um, be honest with yourself about what's stopping you. There's, I mean, again, that's kind of the corollary of don't have, don't live with your excuses. Um, but again, last one is again, I repeating myself, practice, 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 learn what can go wrong. How do you do doctor's appointments? How do you hook up with family? Does it work? Oh, what about doing your mail and your bills? I moved everything online so I could pay everything. Um, pretty much, I yeah, I've not had any problem. The biggest problem is mail coming to you that you have to deal with. 
um, from time to time. And so I, I happen to leverage my kids and they sometimes box it up for me. But I stop by every two months and deal with and get caught up and it hasn't been a problem. Anyway, that's my adventure. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe and hope you hope this helped you become a bit, uh, better at traveling or better at uh, taking a break from life and, and figuring out what your next steps are. Enjoy.